Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to make this exact scene using Blender. We are going to be starting from a base mesh from the 3D warehouse. And we are mainly going to be focusing on making a very nice environment with a nice lighting as well in a really, really fast period of time. As always, all of the necessary assets are linked down below. And if you like this, stay in. We are starting with this base model from the 3D warehouse. This exact model is made by Ana M and is called the Growing House. It's a really nice model, extremely good topology in comparison to other SketchUp files and a really nice base mesh to be working on. The first thing you want to go ahead and do is select everything and separate by material. Next thing is go ahead and choose the most major object Press Shift L and select linked by material, Control G to join them. That way you have all of the objects that share the same material are linked in a single object. That way you can be applying modifiers or do the cleanup of the mesh right in. Now what you want to do is press M in edit mode and delete all of the overlapping vertices. Additionally, you would want to go ahead and press X and limit it dissolve and delete any weird attributes or normal informations and properties. After that, you want to go ahead and enable auto smooth in the normals in order to be able to add a weighted normals in a second. Now we are going to be adding a bevel. For the bevel, we are going to be using the percentage type which gives us way more control as opposed to like the regular dimensions. Three segments and 45 in the angle. Also add a weighted normal. This will help clean up all of the messy normal and shading. Make sure to tick keep sharp as you could see in front of you. As for the materials, our stucco material is procedural 100%. We are using a normal noise map setup. The first noise map is extremely small to emulate these small bumps on the stucco. And the second one is way larger with a larger roughness. This will emulate the irregularities that are larger in scale and lower in frequency on the surface of the stucco. Feel free to copy those settings exactly. We are going to mix them through a mix node. With the sliders right in front of you, plug it into a pop map through the hard slot and into the normal slot again. Same thing, we are going to be using our big noise map and mixing it using over multiply or overlay with almost white color, so 0 0.9 or 210. Mix it all the bit slightly, we do not want the house to look extremely dirty, but some very nice and subtle variations. Add some roughness, stucco typically is not very reflective. And for the metal, we are doing the same thing with the bevel and weighted normals, as well as using a noise texture with a roughness, large roughness, plug it into a color ramp to to tone down the contrast and using a multiply to control the reflectivity and glossiness of the actual object. Plug in the same map into the pump and this gives us an extremely quick setup. For the last, really simple with a small bluish tint, extremely unsaturated and absolutely white. The rocks or the decorative stone facade, whatever you want to call it, is literally just using the same material that came with the 3D Warehouse SketchUp file or Collada file. Now these are the materials that I'm going to be spending time on improving. The next step would be adding a camera. We are going to be keeping the same aspect ratio, so the default one, and using Shift F in order to use the WASD movement or if you're familiar with video games 
that would be the same wave movement, I assume. Shift Y and the focal length of 35. Just find a nice composition and make sure to not have any rotation on the X axis other than 90. That way you don't have any screwed up verticals and horizontals on the Y. We are going to be using cycles and if you have a GPU, make sure to be using that. It makes a huge difference. Add another zero to the end so we are seeing 10,000 meters. And enable denoise if you want to have that. And light paths set the transparent to 512. It's not going to add render time. But it's going to help us once we add the vegetation that has opacity maps in their material. Let's add the sun and give it 0 0.2 in terms of strength. Let's set the directionality and the sun elevation to somewhere around 37, 35, up to 40, depending on what time of the day you want to go ahead and look for. At this point, we are going to be scattering some gravel or pebbles. I am using something from the Big Pie asset packs. Extremely nice. This is my first time using it, so I really like it. Otherwise, you can use some that are free online or make your own. It's literally just a couple of spheres moved around and add a simple rock texture on top of them. Wouldn't really make that much of a difference. Make sure that they are low poly though. And we're going to be using Geo Scatter with the density scatter preset. Set the density scatter before scattering everything extremely low so we avoid any type of crashes and make sure to read the informations of the estimated amount. After that, feel free to up the density. Now the first thing we want to do is add some random rotation. Give 5 to the tilt and 360 for the yaw which is the rotation of the z-axis. For the random scale, I like to go ahead with some, somewhere around 0 0.3 to somewhere around 0 0.7. That works well. And up the density. In this case, this is just eyeballing. Just make sure it's not extremely dense, that everything looks mushy at some point, and it's not too sparse, that it looks weird. Enable the visibility proxy in your in your viewport settings and just use a proxy that looks good visually especially if you are using a big scene that will help you differentiate between multiple scatterers and you can also go ahead to the visibility and enable can optimization with fov boost that looks okay do not worry about needing to trim everything since we are going to be covering it with grass either way which we are going to be getting from the botanic add-on you can use Bugapi, you can use the free uh, geoscatter packs that they have on blender market all of them are extremely beautiful all of them are gorgeous or you can make your own or just download something off of the internet remember our purpose is making extremely fast scenes and letting beginners have a really nice result without getting demotivated with the technical detail that will come later on or if you are an architect this will be some useful for you probably do not care as much about this process since you have a lot of things to worry about and this is only a small part of your whole workload when getting a project if you are a visualizer you have to know how to make everything from scratch As you could see, I'm literally just copying the same uh, particle system that came with the actual botanic plane and using it. Now, what I'd like to do is leave everything as is, but play with the density. Before doing that, I highly recommend that you go ahead and hide the particle system in the viewport. This is mostly to avoid crashing when adding the interpolated children. So let's just set it up at 5 first to avoid any type of crashes or freezing inside of the viewport. 
and work on this in the render view. Up it incrementally, increase the density incrementally until you find something that looks good for you. In this case, on the scale of the actual plane that came with the SketchUp file, 25 interpolated with 10,000 or 12,000 was good enough. The second thing we want to go ahead and do is add trees. For the trees, we are using the di pine dynamic pack or dynamic pine biomes. You can use some from the botanic add-on, you can use some from forestation, you can use some from bag pie, or you can go ahead and use some of your own or use just a regular pine tree off of the internet. It doesn't really matter as long as they are good quality. This is the pack that I am using by Burr's Scan Collection. Extremely nice, extremely beautiful. I wish they were a bit higher in Polygon. As you can see, it takes care of the variation, takes care of the ecosystem as a whole. Now, before working and adding any other elements, I like to go ahead and isolate every single scatter layer and play with it until I find something that I really like. Sometimes the scatter amount differentiates once everything is enabled, which is why I highly recommend that you go ahead and do a second pass with everything visible in order to avoid any type of collision or any sort of other issues as well. Now, as you could see, I am just going back and forth, changing the seed of the distribution until I find something that I really, really like. looks pretty solid and with the grass it's going to look even superior now with our grass and tree setup we still need some other details like shrubs perhaps stones rocks maybe embarkments maybe stumps you know whatever you can have access to use mega scans which is by the way moving to fab anytime soon in the in october i believe if i'm not mistaken just scatter these around don't go too overboard with it we are not in a quarry we are not in a forest this is a private villa add some trees where it makes sense you know hand-picked you can never go wrong with that hand-picked usually looks more organized which is what we are going to do here and what we are going to need right in front of the house so botanic as you could see in front of you alternatively you can use max tree this is what I use for commercial work and uh, at work. And just position them until they make sense. Now with everything set up correctly, Start adding some other details if you have time, maybe add some shrubs, maybe play with, you know, I can't really tell you, add the car maybe, add the humans, you know, make sure these humans are great or enhance them in Photoshop or Stable Diffusion. I will be making a tutorial about that soon enough once people can digest it. These shrubs really help with the blending in the foreground and the background trees as well. So it's not just the grass and large trees. We have difference in a gradient of height and the whole scene vegetation in general. Let's go back to our sun setup, the sky. Set the altitude to 3000. This will give you a bluer color and a less white horizon. Set the ozone to 4, which is going to again add some bluish tint. 
We are going to be working on that in a second. Play with the rotation until you get some really beautiful shadows as well. These shadows will be absolutely amazing and will help you a lot with the contrast and the color composition of the scene. Try to get the foreground to be almost fully in shadow except some small uh, patches of light peeking through the trees. Now what you want to do is add a backdrop with trees in order to not see any ugly horizon. This house is set up, for example, in on a rural, let's say, area. And it needs some context. It's not literally floating in the air. Which is why I think they like to add either an image, a really high quality image, and work on it on Photoshop. Or make everything full CGI. In this case, full CGI is way easier. And I didn't really spend too much time on it. Usually, I would use something I generated in Gaia. And scatter some trees on it using the altitude and the slope map that comes from the Gaia. We are using dynamic paint trees as well. Just position them where they make sense. You can use the ANT landscape pattern to also do that, but in this case it doesn't matter at all. Wouldn't make that much of a difference since you only want to hide the actual horizon. At this point, you want to add a cube to add some atmosphere. You don't absolutely need it since we are not seeing too much far behind. But it can be nice. You might even, depending on your tree setup and your and the directionality of your actual light source or sun, you might get some really beautiful god rays as well. Or you can target that from the beginning and work on the scene so we specifically have some really nice guard rays. I like to use the principled volume. It's really nice, complete in my opinion. You might need to add every now and then some noise setups, maybe add some custom maps, maybe add different geometry. I have shown that in one of my earlier videos, I think my third video, which was a breakdown of the mountain scene. Feel free to check that out. It's a really nice video. Extremely useful, I believe. I like to use the color from our sky. So we have a really nice subtle haze with a bluish tint. You might go ahead and do the opposite of that. And have a little bit of emission. Now with everything set up correctly, you should have a really, really solid scene to be working off of. So this is the result in round 20 minutes of work. Now one might say I want a bluer color. So you are going to duplicate your same sun. Also duplicate the background. Mix it with a mix shader as well. And add a light path node with in-camera ray as the factor that is driving the mix between these two shaders. After that, you want to go ahead and add a hue saturation node and plug it through the second sky texture. And with that, you can go ahead and up the saturation and play with the hue and value as well. So we are nearing the end of the video. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Send me a message on Instagram. I answer everyone and join our discord if you like the video subscribe i have some really nice stuff planned out for the future and i'm planning to make some nice community competitions and challenges with prizes so thank you for watching it through the end and i hope you found it useful if you happen to follow along, please send me the result. I am going to feature it and give you feedback as well. So until next time, take care and enjoy yourself.